Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner Metazone and Rovi. And today we're going to talk about the metaverse, the Chinese Whoa. version. A metaverse update, eh? Yeah, it's been a while, man. What's yeah, going so on we, have, we haven't forgotten about the metaverse. No, of course not. There's uh, still some stuff happening. Correct. I mean, the metaverse is always happening, you know. Yeah. The virtual world exists, it always will exist. And uh, yes. <clears throat> the big question, though, and we talked about it, I think, on our last podcast. Is like, what is going to be the catalyst? What is the true value of the metaverse, right? Just like you can identify where yeah. the value st- was stemming from, like with the internet, oil and gas discovery, like the advent of like combustion engines and stuff. Yeah. All the real utilities that are, are permeated through our day-to-day lives, right? Like value is clearly understood. Yeah. But when it comes to the metaverse... Yeah, it's not so obvious. <laughs> not so obvious yet. Right now, it's like, is it really just like a a virtual zone to like party and like <laughs> erect art galleries. Is that, yes. is that the value that's going to, you know, pivot humanity to a whole new paradigm? Yeah. Hell no. I don't think so either. Yeah. But China has its own plans in mind. Yeah. And uh, after we looked into it, we're like, holy shit. Yeah. They're, they're like us. They're thinking like us. Yeah. Shockingly. Cause I didn't even think China was really paying attention mm-hmm. to the metaverse. You know? Yeah, they see like a ton of potential and value into it that they're or you're going to show you. They yeah. have a coordinated effort mm. to bring this to fruition. Like a big one. Like a government backed one. Like like as coordinated as probably like the Manhattan Project yeah. or something like that. That's what it yeah. looks like. Yeah, it feels like it yeah. because I, I wish I was like a fly on the wall in those like discussions. Yeah, and we knew Mandarin and we can just like <laughs> decipher. Yeah. Like the uh, everything that was tossed around. It's like because, you know, you would we're talking government backing here so the government has a big responsibility right and mm-hmm. like navigating a country's direction in the right way yeah when it, when it comes to tech like that's a big deal right yeah, yeah yeah it's a big big proclamation so what is it exactly that they said all right so i found out about this by watcher guru so as soon as i saw this and yeah. i read china launches government backed metaverse platform mm-hmm. i was like dude we got to check this out yeah so i click on the link below and we got this article and it starts with, um, here we go. It says, the new program is being headed by a Nanjing University of Information and Science uh, te- and Technology. Moreover, an official announcement. So I click on this official announcement, and I see this. Yeah. All right. Everything's in uh, in Chinese here. Mm-hmm. And we got this whole conference. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Yeah, everybody talking about the potential of the metaverse, it seems like. Mm-hmm. Right. We got speakers. Yeah. Like something that we've never seen for the metaverse, right? It's like a whole freaking panel. Yeah, I'm trying to recall if there's been any kind of like initiative like this from like the Western's perspective. Yeah. At least around, the, I mean, I guess. Yeah, we, we got like concept images of yeah. their virtual environment. Yeah, I guess nothing yet, right? I mean, everything that's being pushed from the West is coming from big tech. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, basically. Yeah. Meta. Yeah. That's the biggest thing we've seen as far as like some notable entity of, of significant power and in, in, in force, right? And yeah. resources proclaimed to the universe is like, you know, we're focusing on this metaverse thing. Right. You know? Right. But now the East is responding, you know. Yeah, like, take this, Zuck. <laughs> Basically. So look at this. Look at this rendering back there. Yeah. Scroll up a little, Will, and see, uh, look at the uh, name on the, the bottom of the the little. Oh, yeah. It says Metaverse Technology and Application Innovation Platform of China. Wow. Application Dude, what innovation, a, huh? What a dirty what, words. What is that acronym? Is there even one that you can pull from that? M- M- TAP M-T-A-A-I-P. IPOC. M- M-TAP IPOC. M-TAPE. M-TAPE. Uh, not everything needs an acronym. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was really like sh- reaching for one there. But okay, no acronym needed. But still, this is a good, s- what you're saying, coordination happening before our eyes. Yeah, so of course, I use the Google uh, Translate. Yeah, we need to know what's actually happening here. And so this is when I was like, I man, we got to check this out. Yeah. So let me read this, this section here. It says, the platform aims to effectively integrate the technological innovation power of enterprises, colleges, research institutions, and R&D institutions. Strengthen org- organizational empowerment and strengthen the deep integration of the digital economy and obsteric research in the, it says metacosmic, but it's really metaverse field. So remember, this is all translated. 
The platform will mainly work on the social ecology of the universe, mm. economic system, social system, identity system, production environment, cultural system, legal system, industry, industry standards, etc. Jesus. Focus on joint technology research and development, regulatory ethics, business models, and creative investment institution experts. Coordinate research and development and application strategies in the fields of basic technology, business form, and ethics related to the universe, which I'm assuming they mean the metaverse. Mm -hmm. And promote the digitalization, intelligent transformation, and technological innovation of the universe in various industries. Right, And here's the cool part. China has made positive contributions to building an independent and controllable metaverse industrial ecosystem. Industrial ecosystem. Okay, that's a ton of words. <sighs> that was obviously a lot of broken uh, English here. But it doesn't sound broken to me, dude. This is music to my ears. I, I love this translation. <laughs> <laughs> so far, this is everything I want to hear. Like when it comes to any kind of initiative. Yeah, and this is what the metaverse is supposed to be, not, not art and global or, or galleries and like partying. Yeah, at least well that stuff is embedded in part of like the metaverse, but that's not like what's going to make a trillion dollar industry. Yeah, it starts at a much more fundamental and like <clears throat> rooted level than that. Like there's a lot of like we've been saying for years now. The, the I don't know if like the masses, even the ones who are tapped into the metaverse and like truly believe in the vision of it and the understand the scope of it, they don't know how much infrastructure is actually yeah missing yeah right it's a tremendous amount of infrastructure that yeah. doesn't exist and because of that we can't really build anything of substance or value on top of anything even close to what we can label as the metaverse yeah right? so and it's crazy that china just seems to recognize the the breadth of potential that we see and what the metaverse could be yeah i mean it's not that shocking to be honest i mean <sighs> China, I mean, it's a very tech centric, I think, culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I think that's they, true. They they have celebrities that are completely virtual. Yes, yeah, stuff like that, and I think you know they spend a lot more time educating like their 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 youth about like yeah. technology and computer science and stuff like that. That's actually like core curriculum for yeah. for their whole like up and coming generations. For yeah. us in the in the West, I don't even think. Yeah, I think it's still like an optional thing. Like I, I'm not. I don't know. I don't have a no, kid. No, I think you're right. <laughs> There's it definitely wasn't for us. Kids are not learning how to code right? because uh, it's, it's an option, right? They have to decide to code. Yeah, basically it's like, yeah, if you want to have part in the future economy, then choose to participate in that. But China, they've been curating their whole like up-and-coming generations, like preparing them for the future, which is going to be much more digital, much more virtual. What do you think of that, though? Like the, f the enforcement of like learning – you know, the digital stuff rather than like choosing it. I think it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're forced to learn everything we've learned through our childhoods. Like we, we didn't choose to want to learn like history, history and or, you know, biology, chemistry, even though these things are not like nothing. Yeah. That's right. Good point. I mean, we were even forced to like learn like, I don't know, like health. Yeah. Which is, again, it's not a nothing burger, but why not just add in, you know, one yeah small little a new language <laughs> called java <laughs> something at least like a some introductory course to like you know plant the seeds yeah. in the youth's mind like yeah this technology thing is a big freaking deal and uh, it's going to be basically ubiquitous and this you know this ai stuff is coming let's teach our kids how to leverage it yeah 100 percent. not be afraid of it yeah. stuff like that you know and china I, I think has been on the ball on all of this right so i'm not surprised yeah i am a little surprised only because of their stance against crypto as of late. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, because crypto is going to play a huge role in the metaverse. Well, yeah, if they're talking about economy here. Yeah. And uh, things like identity, I mean, you, you can still have identity verification stuff off chain, but still, that's a big component of like an on chain economy is going to be on chain identity. Yeah. Right? You can't have like credit systems and DeFi. That's right. Like without it, <clears throat> you know? So I think it's. This is a tremendous like uh, update coming out of China, and it's not. It's not. This is only the only thing that's coming out from them, right? Uh, no, unless you're talking about the whole Russia bricks. No, not that. <laughs> the CZ oh, yeah, put out CZ, a tweet yeah, today. Yeah, you're right. So okay, let's let's read the tweet. So CZ, uh, CCTV, which is China Central Television, just broadcasted crypto. 
Yeah. It's a big deal. The Chinese speaking communities are buzzing mm-hmm. historically. Coverages like these led to bull runs. So yeah, I could I could totally understand that. Not saying past predicts the future and not financial advice. <laughs> of course yeah. CZ would have to say that at the end. Yeah. But basically, he's say, he's basically saying like prepare for like the bull run of all bull runs, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, because he's basically he's he's saying that China is coming in. They're coming in hot. Right. Because the uh, they're broadcasting it to their whole population. Yeah, like dude, this, look this at crypto that. stuff. Look at that big old B, dude. Yeah, like look at that. Buy bitcoins. <laughs> 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 look at that, dude. And then there's other other images of them showing what NFTs are. They're getting people like interested in this whole digital economy. Yeah. Which for years has been like on their ban list, you know? Yeah, it's it seems odd. They just keep flip flopping. I, I don't know if they're like accumulating Bitcoin, like it's time to buy more so they like spread FUD. I don't know. I think at first China didn't like the the prospect of a you know, a decentralized financial system, obviously. Yeah. But I think now they're starting to witness and see the United States how they're how we're handling <laughs> the situation, and it's like wow, or fumbling it. Yeah, exactly. Like, dude, these guys are worse than us, <laughs> you know, when, with their stance against this new technology. So hold on a second. Yeah, maybe the better idea here is to actually embrace this stuff and to take a lead position yeah. in this whole new sector of technology, right? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, if you guys know, obviously the China. And its allies are in competition with the West. Yeah. It's no secret. This is public as it gets. Yeah, so that's whenever, why they form BRICS, right? Correct. So when you're in competition with another, you know, body of entities or nations, you you leverage whatever position of, you know, uh, advantage you can come by, mm-hmm. right? So if blockchain and crypto and Web3 is something that the West does not want to embrace, then this just belongs to the East, essentially, right? Yeah, so someone, Crypto Hub, translated this uh, announcement. It says, starting from June 1st, guidelines for operators of virtual assets trading platforms will off- officially take effect. So operators who are currently are planning to provide services related to virtual assets trading in Hong Kong must apply for a license from the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission. Mm-hmm. So basically, they're saying that we have guidelines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which everything that Coinbase has been like fighting for. Yeah, and, and Gary the SEC Gensler fights against. Right. Yeah. China's doing now. China's like, yeah, dude, you want guidelines? Here they are. Get over here, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or if you're already here, you stay here, but just get in line for this nice little paper. Yeah. And you're good. You're Gucci under the eyes, the lens of the, you know, uh, People's Republic of China. <laughs> so you think Brian Armstrong is going to move Coinbase to Hong Kong? I, I would speculate there's a very high probability. What what a slap in the face to the United States. If that States, were to happen, that would, uh, that would be probably one of the biggest signals. Yeah, like the, that the what do they call that? The hegemony of the United States, like basically America's like oh, yeah. dominance over the last century officially over. Yeah, the domino has started to f- to fall basically. Correct. Yeah, it's like we we've allowed the grips of like innovation to escape from the, from America, like and over the last hundred years, that's where a lot of innovation was sourced, and yeah, because the government used to be like this. Yeah, they used to provide clear regulations and guidelines and have favorable environments for businesses and entrepreneurs to take advantage of. Yeah, people from all around the planet used to come to this country and you know set up base. Yeah, because this was the place to do it. But now the exact opposite is happening. You know. Yeah, and they even like go into details say they can continue to operate in Hong Kong after approval Op- operators who do not intend to apply for a license should start to orderly end yeah. their operation in Hong Kong the first challenge we can see is the safety on the network it's a significant challenge the second is the protection of customer assets how they are stored and handled mm-hmm. the third of course is conflict of interest yeah that's interesting yeah i mean so these are like the the areas of I think like a uh, oversight that they're kind of prioritizing is like, we need yeah. to, yeah, you guys can start operate, but, but expect us to kind of like be up your ass a little bit about these things. Cause yeah, we got to protect the people and make sure you're not like, you know, colluding, doing or insider information yeah. type shit, you know, cause you get, it's conflict of interest. You guys know what's going on. You guys are handling all these assets. So you gotta, yeah, you can't front run any stuff like that. Yeah. And all this is very reasonable. Yeah. I this agree. Is exactly what regulation looks like, dude. <laughs> Yeah, so now we have the combination of China supporting crypto after 
what is it? Almost like, you know, I want to say a decade, but like several years of at least four or five. Yeah, banning potential and all this like, stuff. Yeah, banning and unbanning, un- and yeah. then basically China, like the I remember back in the 2017 cycle, most of the volume on like these uh, essentialized yeah. exchanges were sourced from like, you know, China and Korea, places yeah. like that. Most of it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no more Chinese liquidity in the, in these markets, right? Yeah, we even saw a little bit of this too on our own platform. Yeah, true. We were uh, we have a metaverse native marketplace a storefront. Yeah. And a lot of our assets that were purchased back in 2020, 2020, yeah. We're from Chinese retail customers, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's pretty mind-blowing when you think yeah. about it. Yeah, I had to join WeChat so I can communicate with some of these folks. Yep, exactly. And I had to translate everything, like, with mm-hmm. Google yeah. Google Translate, so... Yeah, so I, I imagine if, if, if crypto is, again, buzzing in China and um, it's being supported by the government... Dude. And being the metaverse is, like, being constructed, I guess, like, organized and uh, is... The government's pushing this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I agree with CZ, dude. Not financial advice, but <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine this being like the next bull cycle is going to be very entertaining, extremely entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> because we're talking about China here, dude. Yeah, yeah. China's coming back. It's like a billion people. And then watch next week is headlines like China bans everything again. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why they keep flip flopping. Like, I don't what, know. who who's in who's in control? Where it's like uh, they're, they're flipping the switch on, flipping it off. I feel like Xi Jinping controls all, dude. I don't know. I, I, it feels like it. But. Have you guys ever heard of the word pump and dump? <laughs> 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 it's literally just like a group of dudes like loading their bags, and it's like, all right, push push the media. Yeah, it's like. We're back. It's like, yeah. like, all right. It's like we, we, we sold. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> that would be amazing. That's actually what's going on. But I don't think so. Huh. It just seems so weird. It's like there's a disagreement internally. It's like we should ban it. We should not. I don't know. Maybe this whole <laughs> thing is just to like obfuscate like America's reaction to this. It's like they're playing 5D chess. Maybe. It's like if China's banning it, the United States doesn't need to like prioritize this, this, this innovation. It's like, yeah, we can disregard yeah, be- it. They're banning it, so all innovation is going to happen here regardless in the United States. Right. Right. And then now that they're not, all of a sudden, it's favorable to launch businesses in Hong Kong. <sighs> right. But, but what I'm saying, though, I think maybe maybe China just figured it's like, let's not like make it look like we're super all in on this stuff too early. Mm-hmm. Just to like not get this race going right off the rip like let's give ourselves some time to like really understand this whole space and I see. the technology not get every other nation like like you know let's not start a space war here like a yeah. race to to mars yeah yeah you know like china has done their due diligence research they discovered the metaverse is significant yeah they probably... as significant as like discovering you know another galaxy basically <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah, they're probably having their kids like let's get the kids building yeah. blockchains or you yeah know, early on. Yeah, they've done all the different like social testings and stuff like that. Let's put these, you know, let's immerse like a whole population of people into this virtual environment. Yeah, let's do these like economic simulations and let's see what happens. Like they've yeah. probably done all of that. Like, <gasps> hold on, like after like a hundred years of this simulation, the economy has like outpaced the physical economy yeah. like a hundred to one. Yeah, and like holy shit, we need to prioritize this. And, like, not release this research. Yeah, it makes sense. And then now it's like, all right, we're ready to go. United States, you guys are fucking up. You guys are way behind. I mean, when's the last time we saw any particular industry be have, have like, a prediction of in the trillions of dollars? Like, I, I don't remember <laughs> anything being close to that. I don't know, to be honest. Other than, like, oil and, like... Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemons, dude. Trillion dollar economy for sure. I don't know, but you're right. I I agree. We've been wrestling with our own heads, but it makes sense to us because, yeah, yeah, I I mean, we're talking about a new existence layer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This is like like a new galaxy. It is. So a new galaxy that you- It's like limitless. It's a new galaxy that we are gods of. Yeah. We create. So not only are we creating like sentient uh, (laughs) intelligence- Yeah. We're also creating the galaxy for that sentient Potentially. intelligence. Potentially, yeah, we we can create the entire like framework and and yeah grounds for this sentient life form to 
you know, cohabitate and yeah. flourish and who knows, create own their own value mechanisms. And then from that, dude, that's what we should do. We should convince the AI that their, their only world is the metaverse and that there is no uh, outer. <laughs> Sounds like an M night Shyamalan movie. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. That would be some brutal shit, man. Yeah. There's probably, gonna, there's definitely going to be like some ethics discussions around a project. That's like true. That. That's it's true. Like, you guys are evil. Yeah. Stuff like that. But yeah, man, I mean, I'm damn dude. So we got BRC twenties popping off, Bitcoin's exploding, China's coming back. Yeah, yeah. The metaverse is on its way, dude. You can't, I couldn't be more bullish. Yeah, yeah. This is we're we're in good position, dude, to take advantage of all this. Yeah, guys. So keep watching. You know, this is opportunity of a lifetime. If you're engaged, if you're here watching this type of stuff, you're you're in the right place. To be honest, TBH. Yeah. And if you can, if you guys can read this and <laughs> and correct anything that we got, you know, we said here, let us know. Strongly would appreciate it. Watch it be like not even yeah. a, like a related conference. This is like yeah. some, like a fucking real estate meeting. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> that would be that would be pretty embarrassing. But we'll see. But but I trust Google though. Okay. So. Cool. <laughs> All right, that's it for us. We talked about the metaverse, CZ. China getting into the metaverse specifically. Mm -hmm. Let us know if you have any questions or if you find anything interesting that we need to take a look at. Yeah. Comment below. Follow us on Twitter at the Blockrunner, at Metazone.io, and at Roby AI. We will catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>